Tuesday. So glad that you could join me this morning as we spend some time in God's Word. Hope that you are off to a great uh, week so far and hope that you will be uh, just filled with God's presence today as you live your life as His disciple. Going to be looking this morning at Romans 13 beginning at verse 8. Uh, if you know anything about Romans 13, what gets the most, uh, I guess, fireworks in Romans 13 is those first few verses, verses 1 through 7, that tell us that we are supposed to honor the leaders that, uh, are, that, that, that we're subject to, the governing authorities. And it makes the shocking claim that all leaders are uh, in position, they are put there by God. Uh, we're told in verse 1 that uh, for there is no authority except from God and that authorities exist uh, are appointed by God. We are further going it talks about the the leaders being God's ministers for our good and uh, obviously we live in a world that uh, is very suspect of leaders uh, especially leaders that we did not in fact vote for and uh, who might not be in the same political party that we identify with and uh, we live in a world that is really polarized right now and uh, we are very quick to ascribe uh, people that we disagree with as evil and uh, all sorts of things and uh, as followers of Jesus we're told to do something very hard there we're supposed to to respect them we're supposed to order our lives under them and be subject to them uh, now, obviously, I could give you some, uh, you know, some things about that. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this uh, because I really want to get to verse eight uh, because eight to the end of the chapter, I think, is the crux of what we really need to hear this morning. But I will say this: uh, obviously, when leaders, uh, you know, compel us to do things that cause us to compromise our faith, we are compelled to follow King Jesus and to resist that, to peacefully resist that, and to uh, to not go along with things that would cause us to compromise our faith. However, as followers of Jesus Christ, one of the things that we need to be doing daily and regularly is praying for the leaders that are, are, are in power. That means we need to pray for all levels of our government. Uh, we need to pray that God, they would be uh, tender to the voice of God, that they would uh, listen to Him, uh, that they would be compelled to do the things that, that God would have them to do to lead our country. Now, understand this. In, in Scripture, we're told very clearly, all from the Old Testament forward, that, that you know not every leader that God gives is for our blessing. Uh, a lot of times, God will give us leaders for our judgment. Uh, we see that most plainly given in, in, in uh, the Old Testament when you know, the people clamored for a king and God gave them what they asked for, Saul, and Saul, you, you see how that turned out. Uh, so again, we, we need to understand that, uh, again, we need to be praying for our leaders and subjecting to them. But I want to pick up at verse 8. Oh no, oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves one another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Friends, right there is the crux of the New Testament. You know, if we want to think about a law, uh, obviously we, we know that Paul has already, in, in Romans, he's already, uh, you know, differentiated the law of Moses and, and, and the law of grace. He's, he's talked to us about how, you know, we are saved not by law, we're saved by grace. We, you know, it's not by us fulfilling the works of the law and, and having an external righteousness that we have, have created because we've ordered ourselves into law. No, that doesn't save us. What saves us is coming under the law of grace, uh, allowing the finished work of Jesus Christ to pay the debt that we could never pay because of our sin. Uh, in fact, Paul makes the, the claim, and, and I think, again, he makes it in other places also in the New Testament, that the law is, in fact, a, ta a, a school teacher, if you will. It's a steward that basically the law, the point, intent of the law of Moses was to raise up the knowledge of sin in man, to make him see how far he had fallen from the original design of God. 
The law was never intended to save us. The law was never intended to be the means by which we are made right with God. It was simply given so that we would understand our sin and understand our need for a Savior. And so when we think about a law of, as far as being a Christian in the New Testament following, you know, what, we, what, what Paul is simply saying here is that the law that we are ordered under, the kingdom law, if you will, is to love one another. He makes the claim in verse 9 that, you know, the, the parts of the, uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, we think about the law in terms of, of the, just the Ten Commandments. But, you know, the, the law was actually bigger than that. You had, you know, the five first books of your Bible contained the law of God. And all of those laws are binding on man uh, in, in under the law of Moses, under, under the covenant with Moses. Um, you know, so if you're looking at the, the Ten Commandments, though, as kind of a representation of the law, Paul says all the commandments that deal with interpersonal relationships, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, all of those are fulfilled, if you will, if we simply love one another. It's the love command. And you know what should mark you and I as followers of Jesus is this love for our neighbor. You know, he says this, love does, does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. You know, when we uh, seek to live a life of love, the love, not just love as the world loves, but the love of Christ flowing through us by the empowering of the Holy Spirit, when we do that, then we're going to, to fulfill in our bodies the law because we're not going to do the things that the law tells us not to do. You know, so it's not about us externally going through this list every morning saying, I can't commit adultery today, I can't commit murder, I can't do, you know, I know that sounds comical that you have to have that self-talk to tell yourself not to murder somebody, but how many of you have been riding down the road and somebody cut you off in traffic and you have really hateful thoughts toward that person? Now, you might not be considered in your heart murder, but Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, if you're angry with that person, you're, you've killed them in your heart, you're, you're guilty of murder. You know, Jesus said, if you're going, if you're walking down the street, and you see an attractive person and you begin to lust after that person, Jesus said you've committed adultery with that person in your heart. You've committed the act in your heart. So what Jesus was saying in the, in the, uh, you know, in, in the Sermon on the Mount was simply that you know, what we do in, in the interior of our heart, even though it might not manifest itself in outward behavior, we're still guilty. The sin is still hatched within our heart. And so here we're finding the, 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 the cure, the antidote, if you will, to that condition. If we simply allow the love of Christ to rule within us, we come under the authority of the kingdom love of God and let the Spirit of God bring that love through our lives, then we will not break the law. We will fulfill the law. Christ is doing it inside of us. So he's changing our inside. He's changing our hearts so that we're not killing people in our hearts. We're not, we're not you know, committing adultery in our hearts. We're not coveting in our hearts. We're loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. And then doing that, we are showing the world the Jesus dynamic. I want to move forward because, you know, this sounds really hard, doesn't it? As I don't know about you, but I struggle every day with loving my neighbor as myself because inherently, because I'm, I'm, I'm affected by the fall just like you are, I'm inherently selfish. I typically want things to go the way I want them to go and to benefit me. And so I struggle with loving my neighbor as myself all of the time. And so this is a push. So how do we make it happen? Well, check it out, verse 11. And, doing the, and do this, knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. He's pointing to the fact that Jesus' return is, 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 is closer today than it was yesterday. Those of you that really want to know when Jesus is coming back, there you go. He's closer today than he was yesterday. Uh, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let's put on the armor of light. In other words, because the day of the Lord is more is closer today than it was yesterday, we need to cast off the works of darkness, being a lawbreaker, and put on the armor of light. Paul talks about putting on the armor of God in one of his other letters. Uh, he, here we put on the armor of light. And here, verse 13, let us walk properly as in the day, not in 
revelry and drunkenness and not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Again, all those qualities that, that are embodied in the law of not committing adultery, not committing murder, not stealing. You see, that's the heart attitude behind what causes the outward act, that, that revelry, that drunkenness, that lewdness, lust, strife, and envy. That's the inward action. So what Paul, Paul is saying, don't allow that to root in your heart. Instead, verse 14, and here is the key, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. There's the secret. Each and every day we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice, that's not passive. The, the, the voice in the Greek in that verse, verse 14, is not passive. In other words, it's not something that's done to you. This is something that you and I have to do. We have to consciously say, I'm going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ today. And what does that mean? That means simply, I'm going to walk in my relationship with Christ. I'm going to let him be a covering to my life so that I am now acting out of the life of Jesus. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit of God to, to create the righteousness of Christ in me. I'm submitting. See, that's the big word, submit. I'm submitting to the rule of Christ in my life and I'm rejecting the rule of my flesh. I will not allow my flesh to be my master. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order my life. I'm going to submit myself to my master, Jesus. Friends, it comes down to today. You're going to serve, one, uh, you're gonna serve somebody. Either you're going to serve Christ or you're going to serve your flesh. Same thing for me. Today, I'm going to serve Christ or I'm going to serve my flesh. Paul says... Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you and I have to consciously say, I am going to follow Christ. Friends, it's not impossible. It's hard. But if we allow the Holy Spirit that is in us, in you, in me, if we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, if we submit to his authority in our lives, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's what Paul told the Galatian church in, in Galatians 5. He said, walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God's Spirit is in you if you are a follower of Jesus. If you've said Jesus is Lord, the Spirit of God is in you. And he will empower you to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, let's make that our, our, our goal today, to love our neighbor as ourselves because we have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for your word this morning. And I just pray, God, that you would empower us by the Spirit to live it out that today I would consciously put on the Lord Jesus Christ, that I would put on the armor of light, and that, God, I would not fulfill the lust of my flesh, that I would not become a lawbreaker uh, because I have begun to hatch those, those, those qualities in my heart of my flesh. I pray instead, Lord, I would walk in love with my neighbor today, that I would seek his welfare above my own, that I would esteem him as more important than myself, that I would humble myself, just like Jesus did. You said in, in, in Philippians, Lord, uh, through the Apostle Paul, that Jesus didn't think equality with you was something to be grasped a hold of, but he emptied himself and came in the form of a servant, and he came in that form to embrace the cross and die on the cross for us, Lord, and because of that, you have exalted him. Uh, you have raised him higher than anyone through the resurrection. And Lord, you told us in that passage of scripture to have this mind in us that we willingly divest ourselves and we seek the welfare of others above our own. Well, that's loving our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, empower us by the Holy Spirit today to live that out. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a great Tuesday. Let's put on the Lord Jesus Christ and not make any provision for the flesh today. God bless you guys.